Well, good morning to the four F's out there, my fine fellow friends and fisher people. I think that covers everyone. Hey, thanks for coming along again. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Today, we are going to be targeting bluegill and crappie. Um, the bite is definitely on now in central Indiana. They're moving in shallow, and I've been getting into a good mix of fish lately. We're gonna fish two ponds today. Uh, one, the pond will start at, <clears throat> I've been doing really good, good on a mix of fish on. And uh, if we don't get anything there, we'll, we'll bump down the road to another pond that tend to do really well on bluegill. So hopefully today, um, I've got my fish basket. I'm gonna try to, if we can bring home 10 or 20 fish in that, uh, you know, 10 to 20 inch range, that would be great. So I do love me a good uh, fish fry. Oops, don't want to miss my exit here. And we'll be using a uh, two pound line. We're fishing West Indianapolis today. Two pound line on my Eagle Craw. That's, that's kind of turning into one of my favorite little rod and reels. It's just so fun bringing in a fish on two pound line and that noodly little rod. And then uh, the other rod is this new uh, six and a half foot crappie stick I got at a, at a fishing show and I like it a lot. And um, under a bobber, a little bobber, and we got a double jig set up on that. I'm using loop knots on everything today. Tiny jigs. Um, that one will have four pound line. So, uh, I don't know what else there is to tell you. Um, sometimes it's, you know, it's interesting what you can catch on four pound line. But then other times, if they're not biting, sometimes just switching over to two pound, uh, it, they'll just pick right back up. So it's been really interesting to see how um, sometimes, you know, line sensitivity or uh, diameter of line can make a really big difference. So it's a beautiful, beautiful April day. I think we're going to do, oh man, that's pretty. I think we're going to do really well. Okay, back to our little natural presentation here. Back to the stonefly. Oh, missed one. Missed one there. Oh yeah, okay, I did have one. Can't tell what this one is actually. Oh, there's our bass. <laughs> there's our little bass. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I knew we'd get into a bass here. I knew we'd get into a bass. Species four. Yeah, when he jumped, it's it's pretty rare that a gill or crop you'll jump like that. Oh, I thought something was swimming with it right there already.
Man, I didn't think that was a big deal, but I think it is actually pretty big. Yeah. That's a chunker. That's a chunky gill. No, that one's going back. He's, he's thick, but he's not very long. There he goes. Oh man, I could do this for another hour or two. I don't think I should, but I could. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Something I'm still learning. At 52, I'm still learning this. Well, I've learned something today. I've learned about the importance of uh, the natural presentation. Because this is about as natural a lure presentation as there is. Oh, I missed a fish there. They're definitely liking it. And, you know, this trout magnet head, I guess there's just something to be said for it. We can't discount what that might be bringing to the table. I mean, I just haven't fished with them much, but some guys swear by them for trout, for crappie, for gills, for everything. just shaped a little different they give a different uh, swimming action to your lure they're shaped like kind of a wedge speaking of wedges shout out to my buddy Justin wedges my favorite wedge my favorite wedge of all time Justin, we'll fish together one of these days again. Lord willing. <clears throat> Once you're done raising your tribe of kids. You know, given how stacked up the fish have been in here, it really does make me wonder if we'd taken the time to go down to that far end bay. What is that goose doing? Showing off. You know, the fish might have just been stacked up down there, or they might be. We don't have time, but it does make me wonder. Oh, look at that. Another fish. This spot has been just good enough that it's like, why leave, you know? Oh, he got off. 
usually by the time I get them that far in, they're not getting away. Tell you what, this two pound line is hard to, hard to work with. Hard to see, hard to feel. Oh, let's get a few more. <laughs> oh man, this, this little setup is so fun to catch fish on. It is just a darn good time. Ah, might be a key. That's a keeper. Oh yeah. I can feel it. That one's got some <clears throat> meat on his bones. Coming home with daddy. Uh oh. There we go. There we go, there we go. Settle yourself, bud. I'll try in a little closer here on this bend. I got this little eagle claw set up rod and reel for I think 32 bucks at a uh, a mire. A big mire had a fishing section and all the worms were rotten in their fridge. It stunk so bad. I told the person working they need to throw the fridge away. But for 32 bucks this little rod and reel setup has just been amazing. So fun. So much fun. Well, I'm just going to go back to where the fish are, which is way out there. Just get it out there. Very often they're just hitting it almost as soon as it hits the water too. Oh, missed one. Missed another one. I think, I think I'm gonna go down here a little bit more. See if I can cast a little further out.
See, now I might be standing up too high. These fish might be able to see me now. Maybe I had a good thing going there, standing down in that culvert. Sometimes they swim with it and they don't actually take it under. And it's hard to tell that a fish is actually just swimming sideways with your, with your lure. Your lure. Oh, there's a goose right there. That goose has been there the whole time. It must be sitting on some eggs. Right in that, on those stones. Boy, that's crazy. All of a sudden, I'm just not, not getting him now. See, they might have seen me. They might have seen me get up out of that low spot. I might have shut him down. I might have fuzzed myself a little bit there. I might have had a good thing going and I blew it. Oh shoot, I did it one. I had one swimming with it there. You know, and we might just have enjoyed that uh, kind of hour-long feeding frenzy I was talking about earlier, and now we might just be in another another uh, hour, two-hour lull for the day until the next uh, the next uh, feeding session picks up. You know, could be that. It totally could be that.
Lots of good ways out there. Those fish out there definitely don't know we're here. That's that's a good ways out. I missed a bite. Yeah, those fish are trying to escape big time. Saw a fish jump there, so let's try to catch it. Right about where the bobber is right now. Uh, my back starting to hurt. This is always the point where I can tell I've fished quite a while when my back starts feeling like this. Oh, that means I've almost had my fill. Boy, I am kind of striking out here the last 20 minutes or so now. Just for fun, I think we'll walk down past that goose. Hopefully we don't get attacked. Let's see what happens. I'll bring my other pole. See if we can land something down here. Down here. I'll cut a wide path around this goose. Oh, it's just laying low. Try 
trying to make me think I don't see it. You can see a lot more from up here. Don't worry, I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with you. Oh, it's just looking at me. It's got to be laying on some eggs. Man, I can see a nice edge right there. See what the bite's all about down here. See what is happening. Don't worry, I'm not gonna mess with you. That's gotta be the male. I don't want him to come up on me. I had a goose come at me once when I was doing snow removal, it flew at me. I had to walk away from a snowblower. People were laughing at me in the office building. <laughs> that goose wouldn't let me get within 30 feet of its nest. I assure you, my Canadian friend, I will leave you alone. Let's see, he understood that. He believes me. We're speaking the same language, speaking Canadian. Since I've come this far, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down there and cast towards towards that bay and the mouth of that intake or exit, whatever. See if there's anything stacked up in there. <clears throat> stacked up in now. We've come too far not to try, you know. That's a big, uh, that's a big drop off there. On a big rain, the water just pours out of there. Look at him following me around.
Oh, you better not be planning a sneak attack on me. I don't want no sneak attacks. Here, I'll try this one now. We'll try this one. how weedy that is right there. That is weedy. Weedy, weedy, weedy. It's shallow down here. Since we came all this way, we might as well might as well do something precarious, you know? Life's too short to not do precarious things every now and then. That's kind of what I think, anyway. Ah. Seems like there should be fish holding here somewhere. right near this discharge. Then we can say we've explored one end to the other end. That'll be a good note to end it on. Go home feeling like we've lived an adventure, you know? Folks, you don't want to live your life without having adventures, I'm telling you. Just get out there and try something different. Just do it. If you do something, something will happen to you. That's what I like about that movie, Finding Nemo. Oh, oh see, I just missed a fish. Came down here, did something different. Screwed on the other side, boom, missed a fish.
I can tell it's deeper right on the other side there. And that's where that fish hit too. Right on that drop off. Right about there. We're gonna gonna try the Nico here. Cause I can cast out further with this thing too. Well that wasn't real good, but it might work. that a lot better that feels like the sort of cast we might catch a fish on those are the kind of casts I like Boy, oh boy, this bite has ended. Ah. And my balance is not what it once was. Hey, we made it to the edge of the waterfall. That's saying something. That's a thing. I definitely did a thing there. I guess this is an urban waterfall. Let's be real, it's a discharge. Man, we're not even getting bit down here. We got bit one time. Time. 
One time in the hood. God, I feel like we gotta get one fish down, down here. Watch it be a monster bass on this two pound setup. You never know. You really don't. Those turkey vultures are coming for us. Man, I can't believe we're not getting bit here. Stand right here on this slippery, whoa. That is slippery. And this concrete. Come on, one fish, one fish from down here would be nice. They are not cooperating. Not here. This could be a epic fall, epic fail video coming up. If I'm not careful. My right knee is one bad twist or fall away from having a problem. I have to be so careful nowadays. over the road here just for fun Let's see what's in here oh there's a tree that's oh, not a tree that's just a power line Actually, it might be fun to see if there's anything by that dock. Oh, something did hit me there. Well, we're in pond number two, right as my battery number two died. Got into this chunky little dude on my first cast. I think we're gonna try to go down to that, uh, to that dock and see if we can pick up a crappie right under it. 
I've never fished this pond. It's just right on the other side of the road of that other one. So I thought, well, we came this far, we might as well walk across the road and throw in here. Since we came this far, Another one. Let's see if we can catch one more where that other one was down here. Sometimes you can actually whip the fish into a bit of a feeding frenzy by just popping your bobber, oh I lost one, on the top and it actually gets them excited, it attracts them. That's the one downside about this shorter noodley rod is it's, uh, it can be really hard to get a hook set. Oh, what's this? I'm not sure what this is. This is something bigger. Something bigger for sure. Oh, is it gonna... It's either a bass or a big crappie. Oh, it's a bass, yeah. Yeah. Not bad, but I gotta be careful on this two pound line. going to jump for us. Tell you what, this little Helgermite, I'm a fan, I'm definitely a fan. Boy, I thought for a minute that might have been a big crappie, but like not a big bass, but on two pound line, that's great. Bass number two for the day. He wasn't getting away either. You know, good stuff. Well, I found a new, a new pond to explore now. Let's go down to that dock and see if we can just get into something. Cause I don't have much more time here. Let's go to the dock, shall we? Okay, something about a dock. Let's see if the dock can work some magic for us. Right by the piling there. We caught crappie by the last dock. And this one looks kind of just like, oh look, oh. Ooh, I didn't realize my line was up on there. I got lucky, I thought I was gonna lose it. This dock looks just like the other dock, so who knows if there's crappie in here. Maybe this dock will hold them. Right about there is where we caught those other ones when we first got here to that other lake. Let's see if we can do a repeat here.
Oh, well, that was weird. Okay, well, I think it's a gill. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We got one by the dock. I don't know why that was so important to me, <laughs> but it was. Cool. We found a new lake or a new pond. I don't know how fisherman friendly they are, but that other one doesn't have any signs. I haven't really explored this one enough to see if there's any signs, but that other one seems a little more off the radar than this one. Oh, I just missed a fish. This pond appears to be loaded with fish though. I mean, I keep getting bit. I've caught three already. Lost a few. That's a pretty good gill, actually. Yeah, that's a beefy gill. Wow, that's a good one. <clears throat> my goodness, my goodness. really want to know if there's crappie in here. That's what I'm hoping to find out. Yeah, getting bit every time almost. Another nice chunky gill it looks like, yeah. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a good one. That's a good one. That's a gooder. Okay. We gotta get back to the truck, back to the other pond. <clears throat> well, you see what I'm seeing? Maybe that's why the fishing's so good in there. I didn't realize that sign was there, so I'm running to escape. <laughs> I don't think anybody's coming after me. Oh, might have had one there.
pretty good looking basket of fish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm bringing home eight. Probably caught about 20 today. All right, hey, we're at pond number one. I'm gonna show you a little bit what we're using here today because I've been using this a lot the last few months. It's been working really good. So I've got my, I've just got a, there's nothing special about this reel, but it's got four pound line on it. And then I've got this set up with a double jig setup. So on the bottom, I've got a loop knot here. This is just a little tube jig. It's like maybe a 132nd ounce at the most head, little pink head. I like chartreuse, I like pink and white. Little tube jig. I've caught like 40 or 50 fish on this already. So once this wears out, I'll just put a different body on it. And then about a foot up, I've got this little, this is actually a mule head. It's a 180th ounce head. <laughs> it's really flopping around in the wind. That is awesome because a lot of times I'll get the bluegill or I'll get crappie on that upper head. But a lot of times the bigger fish like bass or crappie and sometimes a big bluegill will hit on this bottom one so you're kind of doubling your chances of hooking up and then only maybe one foot above that little jig i'm going to put my bobber this is a small bobber but i'll go even smaller than this you know and then if i'm not getting anything so basically i'm fishing like two and a half feet down right now from the bobber to this one this one's only a foot below the bobber. If I'm not getting action, like right now, a lot of fish are shallow. So this might be perfect, but I might slide this bobber, you know, a foot up. So now this little guy is just uh, two feet under. Anyway, this has just been working really well, this double jig setup. And uh, um, maybe today we'll get a double hookup on film. That would be, that would be pretty, pretty cool. So. Yesterday I caught a black nose crappie and I didn't even realize it till I was releasing it. I was just fishing for 10 minutes in a client's pond and uh, as I was releasing it, I saw the black stripe in its nose. I thought, oh gee, that was kind of a bucket list fish. So um, who knows, maybe we'll get a black nose crappie today. Maybe we'll double up, <clears throat> but it's a beautiful day. I think we're gonna do really good. Mm -hmm. all right first cast here's another little tip this is a fairly large industrial park pond there's hundreds of these down here but the wind's blowing this way so we're gonna use that in our advantage the fishing could be good all along this shore but it could be really good down there now I know it's it gets much shallower down there, but I've done really good like in this pocket. Culverts are another good place to focus. Rip wrap around culvert, culverts tend to be good uh, kind of fish magnets. But when we cast this way, we're gonna be able to get a lot more distance on our cast. And uh, the, just kind of, you know, let the wind be your friend in this case. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe 12 mile an hour winds here. So we're just gonna kind of work our way down this shoreline. We should know really quick if they're, uh, if the fish are gonna be fired up or not. I don't think we're gonna have to wait long till we start getting into them. I got out a little later than I wanted. There's something about that magic, you know, 7.30 to 9 a.m. time frame bite, but <coughs> sometimes it slows down a little bit mid-morning and then picks back up. We'll see. We shall see. There's only one dock on this little reservoir here. This water is pretty clear. You'd be surprised how sensitive uh, fish can be when they see you coming down a bank 
it can shut them right down for a while until they calm back down again so like any fish down that way won't have seen us but fish right in here they may not bite for a while because uh, a lot of them know we're here so they saw me coming that's the other nice thing about fishing our way down that way as you make long casts you're casting towards fish that don't uh, aren't aware of your presence so lots of little lots of little tricks to keep in mind Sometimes they want you to pop a little bit. Other times they want you to just slowly but consistently retrieve it. Sometimes you gotta reel slowly and then uh, pause it. And then sometimes they'll hit it as soon as you pause it. Other times they'll hit it, you know, once you pause it and then give it a little twitch. So we're still just kind of figuring that out. It always takes me like 30 to 30 minutes or so to kind of get into a rhythm, it seems. Just let it sit there for a minute. And sometimes <clears throat> you gotta downsize your bobber. Like this bobber might might even be too too big. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of algae here in this uh, particular little little pond. There is some big crappie in here, I have found out. I didn't even know there was crappie in here until a couple weeks ago, I got into a bunch of them. And if they're finicky, I might have to tip one of these jigs with a little, uh, one of those little Berkeley Galt maggots, which I love. Sometimes that's all it takes to seal the deal. Sometimes that's all it takes. I'm gonna drift it right past this dock here in a minute. We don't get anything out there. Usually I'll pick up a fish right by the, along the edge of that dock. I don't know about y'all, but I love seeing a bobber go down. I never get tired of that. A bobber is just a great indicator too. Sometimes it just gives you an advantage to see what's there before they feel the uh, resistance of the line. So a lot of times by the time you set the hook, it's too late for them. There we go. There's our first fish. What? Oh, we got a crappie. I think we got us a nice crappie. Yes, we do. Oh boy. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Oh man. That's a beauty of a black crappie. He's got his uh, tuxedo on. <laughs> hey, there's a nice first fish. All right. Definitely going in the basket. That's a... Some people have their bucket list. I got my basket list. Let's see here.
he was right by that dock too all right all right My lid is broken on this thing. Unfortunately, I don't want them swimming out on me. I have had that happen a time or two. That's no fun. There. I think we're going to be fine there. <clears throat> we may not need the two pound line. Okay, well. Ooh, it's a little cold out here. See that? That's what we caught him on. And that little, I'm finally getting good at my loop knots. That little loop knot just makes him swim real freely. Sometime I'll, well you can Google how to tie a loop knot. Sometime I'll show you how I tie my loop knots, but they're not hard. That crop, he just took it down slow and steady, like they do. That fish was in about four feet of water. And they may be all up and down this shoreline, who knows. That one was by the dock, so we'll try that again for sure. It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all to get into a bunch of crappie like that. There's bigger ones than that in here too. See, there's kind of a, a cement column by that uh, by that dock end. They could be just really stacked up right there. We're gonna do our part to find out. There we go. Number two, oh boy, I think we found us a slab. Oh yeah, we did. Come on, stay on, bud. This is a big crappie. This is a tank of a crappie. Oh man, we found us, <laughs> oh come on. Don't get off, buddy. You know what? Oh, we're going to have a good, oh, <clears throat> whoa, that's a toad, that's a toad of a fish, oh man, that's a big crappie, oh, it wasn't hooked real good either, that's uh, that's for sure a 12 inch fish. Maybe 13. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I 
mean, I don't know how many more fish I'm going to keep catching. That's all it is. It's a little tube on that little... Again, that's like a 30-second ounce head at the most. But this four-pound line, four-pound line compared to two-pound line, it's pretty strong. Two-pound line is pretty, pretty iffy. You really got to play a fish like that. <coughs> we might not have to go any farther than right here. This could just be one of those crazy, crazy good times. Let's see if we can go three for three. That's more like, that was more like a bluegill. That was probably a bluegill pecking at the little white uh, jig. Crappie hit different than bluegill do. Crappie usually just slowly take it down and just keep going with it. Bluegill tends to kind of fast. Not always, but usually. Sometimes crop you'll just all of a sudden your bobber will just kind of flip over on its side because they'll just swim up to it, suck it in. Drift it back under there again. anything right underneath that dock and this winds making my eyes tear up it's a little chilly it's gonna be a nice day though A downright pretty day. I will go over here. Maybe something jumped out there. Fifteen minutes in, that's a good start getting two two slabs like that. Well, I did not think it was gonna be this cold. Howdy! Oh, that wind just carried it right over there. That's all right. Right where the fish ought to be. There. Oh, I missed one. Just missed one. They're definitely hanging right by the footer on that dock. 
I haven't even got to what I thought is my good spot, which is right down there. So we can get into a few more crappie here before we move. Oh, you got some good ones, huh? Yeah, last spot we went to. Nice, wow. Oh, they got some big bass on that string as well. Let's see where they're going. They might be hitting up my spot. Yeah, they are. Well, it's not my spot. <laughs> they're fishing exactly where I wanted to be. That's okay. They're bass fishing. There's nothing to say we can't get in there behind them and tear up some gills and crappie. I got one already. Yeah, so I've never seen anybody fishing down here, but obviously people do. Anybody can fish this spot. You know, maybe, I wonder if I should try fishing a little deeper out there. Oh good, they kept going. They kept going, all right. I like that. Come on, you old crappie. Eat it. You 
Okay, we're going right under the dock. We'll see if there's anything hiding under there. I would think there'd be something living under there. <clears throat> Nada. Okay, we're gonna go a couple feet deeper. I think I'm gonna try. Try a couple casts here before we move down. I can't feel my fingers. That's a problem when you're fishing. You can't feel your fingers.
Oh, I do have a fish. I do have a fish. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> okay, finally got a bluegill here. This one I switched to a little Nico. Uh, oh, what do they call this again? I don't remember what it's called. I've actually never fished with it. It's on a trout magnet head. Stonefly, I think. It's just a really natural presentation. Yeah, a little, I think it's a Nico Stonefly. It kind of got a Texas rigged. Oh, those guys are back. Oh, maybe they're not. We'll see. <laughs> but this is a more, uh, definitely a more natural presentation here. And I've got this one on a really tiny bobber. It's barely. I can barely see it. But that's good because if the fish take it, they won't feel any resistance at all. It's, I think, what you'd call true neutral buoyancy. I just had another hit. Might be on to a little pattern change here. They might want to just be seeing something more, more natural. How'd you guys do? Have a good one.
hopefully these bluegills will fire up. When they fire up, they fire up. And they're not fired up yet. If they do, we'll be ready for them. Come on, Nico, work your magic for us here. Show us what you can do. Get right over here. There we go. Okay, let's go down to our good spot. Let's go down to the good spot. If we start catching them, then we'll come back and grab all our other other gear and set up down here. That's what we'll do. It's not that the fish aren't here, they're here. They're just not fired up. If they're fired up, we might have 20 or 30 by now. They're either just not feeding or we're not giving them the presentation that they want. And that's part of the trick is getting all that stuff figured out. It's new territory down there. Man, we're not even getting tapped by bluegills. This is really weird. Really weird. I must say.
There we go. Bluegill, I'm guessing. Yep. Mr. Bluegill. Mr. Bluegill on the on the mule. Well, they can't all be keepers. That's just a healthy, healthy little guy. Well, that was nice of him. He kept my uh, kept my gulp for me. Appreciate that. I appreciate it, Clark. Oh, missed one. Wasn't ready. <clears throat> See, just look at your phone. You ever want to catch fish? Look at your phone. Get distracted. You'll at least get a bite. You'll at least get bit. Maybe they're stacked up a little further down in this bay. I think I got some weeds on here. Yep. Well, judging by the bass those guys had in their stringer, stringer. It must have been a strong morning bite, and we probably just got in on the tail end of it. Got something tapping me there. They're not crushing it, that's for sure. They are not crushing it. Oh, this feels like a bigger bluegill. I think this is a big bluegill. Oh, no. Oh, it's a big crappie. Wow, okay, we're still into the crappie. Great. Oh, and he grabbed, he grabbed up high. Look at that. So, okay, so case in point, the double jig setup, right? That's only 16 inches below that bobber. Another nice keeper. 
So they're uh, they're hitting shallow. I thought that was a tank of a bluegill there for a minute, but even better if you ask me. Nice nine-inch black crappie. We'll take it, y'all. Yeah. We sure will. <clears throat> we surely will. Picking them up here and there. Boy, we got we got three beautiful fish in there. Three beautiful fish. See guys, that's what's so great about this this double jig setup. You're just doubling your you're doubling your chances. You might catch them down at three or four feet. You might catch them up in one and a half feet or two feet. And this just allows you more uh, more opportunity because they'll hit on both. And if you keep catching them on the top lure, then you learn something right there. If you keep catching them on the bottom lure, well, then you learn something there too. Well, three or four bluegills, three nice crappie. It's a pretty good morning. I was hoping we'd be at 20 or 30 by now, but we sure did get some quality fish. Man, these fish are just going crazy out here. They're jumping like, like nuts. Okay, we're gonna move a little further down. We're gonna stand in this culvert. Maybe that'll make a difference. Stand in the culvert. Go back to this little Nico here. See if that's what they want. This little eagle claw with two pound, man, it just it casts so smooth. It's just a, it's just a dream, and it's a lot of fun catching catching fish on this setup. Maybe this will make the difference. Maybe they just need a more natural lure and a. Smaller bobber and lighter line. We'll try it. Sometimes just a little subtle switch is all it takes. Subtle switcheroo.
you know, and for all I know, they might be all stacked up down there in that shallow bay because that's the way the wind's blowing. I just don't want to pack up all my stuff and walk all that way. Maybe I should. That might be the smart thing to do, actually. Because it ain't happening down here. You know? It's really not happening. Not even getting any little love taps. <clears throat> well, except right there. See what I mean? Two pound line. I don't know what this is, but it's just fighting like a trooper. Oh, it's a big gill. Yeah, that's a, probably a keeper gill, actually. Absolutely. Yep. On the Nico. The natural presentation. All right. That's worth my time to clean. Beefy eight inch fish. that that's a big crappie oh. I'm gonna move down here a big big fat chunky bluegills here you can't beat that fight on a tighten my drag just a little bit <clears throat> so this is about as natural a presentation as you can get Dark color, two pound line, loop knot. Oh, there we go. Maybe we got something figured out. Little gill. But again, what what fun on this little two pound line. Supernatural. Super natural. <laughs> it's 
how it goes. It can go from nothing to all of a sudden you catch any fish on every cast. Something just switches a little with the barometer, the water temperature goes up a degree, who knows. All of a sudden they just start hammering. I really would like to put about five more fish in this basket. And that makes for a fun, a fun cleaning session. Oh, look at that, I got one. <laughs> Ooh, better fish maybe? Yeah, I think this might be a crappie the way. He took that down right away. Yeah, that's a crappie. You bet. You bet it's a crappie. Even crappies like the Nico. <laughs> Okie dokie. Another keeper black, tuxedo boy. Whoa. Oh man. They got their suits on. Get a picture. Get a quick pick. Well, maybe my wish will come true. Getting more fish. Hey, let me show, what, show you what I'm using for my bobber. This is a fill, T-H-I-L-L. -L. It's got a weight on the end. And I just thread it through the bottom. And you can cast really far. And they don't make a very big noise. Sometimes you can actually get the fish interested because when they land they're not so big and they don't uh, they don't spook the fish so I'm a I'm a big fan of these tiny weighted bobbers so I think we're like three for four casts right now out in this area And they might be just stacked up down in this bay. If we could just keep casting a long way to them, they're not going to know we're here. With as clear as the water is, that can make a big difference. I know I've said that a few times, but I can't say it enough. The fish will see you, especially if you silhouette and you walk up along the bank. You can spook fish 30, 40 feet down if they see you. Oh, something took me there. We're going to fire it way out there again. I've never caught a... I actually have never caught fish on these little Nico flies. Plus, I've got that trout magnet head on it, which has a little bit different of an action. And uh, some guys swear by those. Oh, might have been a fish. See, it's hard to tell with it being so far away. I can't see that bobber very well. These Nico baits are, uh, they float. And they're also almost indestructible. You can catch like a hundred fish on one body. They're awesome baits.
get those weeds off of there. We don't want weeds. We don't want weeds on our hooks. I just kind of got that rig, you know, a little bit Texas rig, but the hook's exposed and the, the bait's riding upright in the water. And it just looks like a little, you know, dragonfly larvae or some sort of little insect. That's about where we got that last crappie out there. Yeah, another one. Well, another something. Something small. Okay, well, I think what, what I'm learning is I got to cast as far out there as I possibly can. This might be a better, better gill than I realized, actually. Oh, look at this. Species three. That's a pretty red ear. Ooh, that's a pretty fish. Mm-hmm. Nice fish. You know, I know some guys, some of you might give me grief, I don't know. To me, when a bluegill hits eight inches, I can get a couple real nice, real nice fillets off that fish. That's kind of my cutoff. If we're just catching tons and tons of them, that's where I'll start getting more picky and say, okay, it's got to be nine inches or more, but I am fine with cleaning eight, eight to nine inch fish. They're hitting a long ways out there. Another, oh, lost one. They're just barely taking it under. I'm actually seeing my bobber kind of go away in the distance. That's what's keying me into it. I can barely see that thing. But that makes for a stealthy presentation. Oh, I do have one. I didn't think I had one. I think he was swimming with it for a while, actually. These aren't, these aren't bad fish we're getting into here, actually. Is that another red ear? Sure is. I'll let this one go. Another red ear. Hey, what a good, what a fun time. See ya. Thanks for playing, dude. Okay, now we're getting, we're back into the fish here, folks. We are up in there. Gonna make for a nice little video. Red ears are pretty fish. Fun to catch. There we go. That bobber just started moving a little bit.
Well, I'm, I'm becoming a fan of this little uh, Nico Stonefly here. I am becoming a fan. I'm not opposed to it. And now the temperature is nice. I'm not freezing anymore. That helps. Wind's dying down a little bit. Let's get a couple more nice crappie in this basket. Ah, huh, shots fired. When the bite is light, having a tiny bobber and light line can really make a difference. You just watch if that bobber moves at all or does something different. You probably got something swimming with you. And they don't know what's about to hit them if everything goes right. There, that should be right on the edge where they're hanging out. I'm so used to hearing shots fired from where I live, it just doesn't even phase me. Although we are kind of in a... where city meets a rural setting here, so... There's lots of land around here. Could be someone just having fun on their farm. Missed a fish there. off of there. Isn't that a cool looking little lure? It sure is. I think it is. my goose call tell me what you think can you see the goose not like there's some rare species to see but yeah weeds again Oh, something took it there. Something took it. I missed that one. Oh, something big jumped out there. <whistles> what was that? 
carp or a big bass. I'm missing some fish here now. I think I just missed three bites. There we go. Soon as it hit the water, what do we have? Doesn't feel big, but who knows? Actually, that's a bigger, that's a bigger gill than I thought. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's basket worthy. A basket worthy gill. Let me get a picture of this just to show people what they're hitting on. You know what? We are going to have one. One heck of a fish fry. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I like when they hit it far out like that too because you get to fight them for a long time. And that's always fun. I like catching fish and I like fighting fish. There we go. <laughs> it's really hard to catch these bites sometimes with all the chop on the water. These are fun, healthy sized gills. Okay, I'm gonna. go back to this double setup because I really want to try to catch a double I want to get into a double header if at all possible that'd be so fun The way this thing's casting, oh, I might be able to get far enough out there. See, this is a bigger bobber, and uh, they're going to feel more resistance when they pull it down. So, plus they might be seeing it. You know, I think it just it might be spooking them. The nice thing about this though is I can see it go under easier than that smaller one. So there's pros and cons with both, you know. I just don't know if I can get this one out far enough like we're like we're getting to with that other one.
and that other one is just such a natural presentation that just might be that might just be what they're wanting or needing See, you can see that bobber a lot more on uh, video, I'm sure, than that other one. So for the sake of those of you watching at home, I hope we catch a bunch of fish on this one, because you can share the excitement a little more seeing that bobber go down. So that's part of the fun. I don't know. I feel like right now this bobber might just be spooking him. Might have to just stick with that little that little nymph, that little stonefly. Oh, something might have hit me there. Something might have hit me. Well, it's feeling like it's been a good trip. <clears throat> I had enough time to enjoy it and get into it. Probably give it maybe half an hour more and then get home, get these cleaned, do some afternoon chores. We'll fire this down there one, one more time. There. That's kind of where the fish have been hitting way down there. See if we can get into a big old crappie there in that bigger jig. Or another bigger eddy or bluegill. Maybe we'll get our bass yet. I'm surprised we haven't picked up a bass today. I think this bob is spooking him. One of these days when it heats up a little I might come down here with the chatterbait or a whopper plopper early in the morning and uh, walk this shoreline and just target bass. I've never just targeted bass here. I just started fishing this pond recently. I found it last fall and I think I've fished it like four times now. It's right down the road from one that I've been fishing heavily. Oh, that took it like a bluegill. Maybe a big gill too. Yeah, nicer one. Ooh, that's a colorful. Look at the nice colors on that fish. Look how pretty that fish is. Look at all the 
orange and copper colors in there. On the mule, on the mule jig. And that was fun, but it took too long. And I think that other setup's working better. Lot of fish so we did pretty good we're bringing home a basket with eight or nine fish in it uh, we got four really nice crappie a couple of them are really good ones like in that 11 to 11 and 12 inch range so uh, we'll see you again thanks for coming along appreciate it